thank you for coming. So I will make a short presentation about how to generate PDF from Python web applications. I'm Gael Domino from Pilot Systems. Uh, so uh, there will be a short introduction. F uh, first part about various tools we can use to generate PDF files. A second part about t tips, tricks, and pitfalls to avoid on the conclusion. Um, so Pilot Systems, it's a free software service provider here in Paris. Uh, we are quite small. But, um, so we do mostly Python web application, both development and hosting. We use, as framework, we use Zoop and Plone since a lot of time, and Django since almost as long as it exists. Uh, and we have various kind of customers, both from the public and private sectors, on both very small and quite big. Um, so very frequently, our customers are asking us to generate PDF files from the web application in various way. Um, the requirement I usually vary vary a lot from a customer or even for, from project to other project. So we end up using different tools for doing different things. And there are several pitfalls to avoid too. A few of them we did avoid them in time. A few other we did fall once and then learn to not fall again. Um, so the first tool we will see is called WYSIPRINT. Uh, so it's a free software Python liber library. Uh, what it does is convert some HTML5 page using the print CSS into a PDF. So uh, it also provides a command line tool if you want to do it from something else than Python, or if you sometimes sometimes we had problem with Python version mismatch, like very old application using Python 2.4, and we wanted to make PDF file, and with a print is only for Python 2.6 and upper, so we had to rely on the command line version. But usually you can just import with a print and just do it from your Python code directly. So. When to use it? The first thing is to convert an existing HTML page, like you have a website, and you show the web page to the user, and you want to generate a PDF version of the same page than you already have in HTML. So you can just convert it. Sometimes you will also use it directly when you never display the HTML version. You just want to generate a PDF, but you want to use the same templating languages, you want to use the same markup languages, CSS, HTML, that you are used to use in your web application. You don't want to learn something else. So uh, you will just write HTML and have WYSIPRINT converted for you. It's good when you have relatively simple page layout, because print CSS is sometimes a bit limited into exactly uh, what you can do in layout of your data. Uh, so simple code. It's very simple. So from WYSIPRINT import HTML and CSS, I don't even use it. You render your template, whatever way you want, and you just do HTML from your render template dot write PDF, and you get a blah, blah, blah binary data that you can give back to the application. You, if you want, well, you can mangle a bit the HTML before rendering it. Like in this example, we just remove references to some CSS, external CSS, one which is for logged in users, which we don't want user bar and things like that to be displayed. On the other, it's because some proprietary fonts that are used and that don't render well in PDF. So you can have a bit of code to actually clean your things before. 
Uh, and you can do stuff with print uh, CSS, like add a page counter, add, a, add a header and footer with a page counter and then saying undefined margin. But it's a bit limited. Another tool is Report Lab. So Report Lab, it's a Python library for generating a lot of things, PDF and also contains some data visualization, graphing, and stuff. It provides a powerful templating language to compose documents with a template and story concept where you have a template where you define boxes and then you write a story that will fix the boxes. Uh, the licensing is a bit complicated. You have a Report Lab PDF toolkit, which is a free software license, but which is limited and doesn't contain everything. You have Report Lab Plus, which is a non-free version, faster and with a lot of extras. Uh, and you have TRMLL.2 uh, PDF, which is a third-party implementation of the RML templating language that uses Report Lab PDF Toolkit, the free version, and give you back some of the features of the non-free version as a third party, so it's a bit complicated. Um, there, for ZOP users, there is some ZOP integration of it. So that's, for example, how you describe something which we had to do for a customer, add some big flashy yellow with big black border uh, box with, this is a temporary document, do not print it, on top of a, in the middle of a document. Um, another tool is, which we use often, is PDF Tika. It's a toolbox to manipulate PDF files. That's not in Python, that's in command line. So you will have to use subprocessor or whatever else to execute it. It does not in itself generate PDF, but you will use it to manipulate PDF, like extract pages, concatenate. Uh, so you can extract pages two and four from, from one document, if by page five of another, and concatenate those three into page one, two, three of your output PDF. It can also stamp PDF on top of another, so you can like have a form background, and then you stamp the value in the in the cells to fill the form. Uh, so that's our use case in which one of the many use cases, so it's a company called Avdas that is that collect taxes from companies and then finance trainings for their workers from the taxes they collected. And companies make a yearly declaration of how much they paid on, on wages on different type of worker contracts with usually usual tax collected complicated forms. They give us a background as a PDF, and we have to give back to the user a filled PDF with all the cells, all the values in the right cells. So we use a mix of PDF Tika on Report Lab to generate something that we stamp on top of another. On. Um, another way is to use LaTeX which is a very powerful uh, document uh, compositing system that is used for scientific publishing and the slide on many things. It's basically simple. You, you generate a .tech file using a template or whatever you want, like an intermediate language, like or structured text. You execute PDF LaTeX and you get a PDF. And it can do lots of fancy things, but I will not elaborate much. Um, for the Braves, there are also a few, few other tips. You can do client-side rendering with JavaScript libraries, but that's not the topic today. You can use, you can remote control a running LibreOffice with PUNO, but you need to deploy a server mode LibreOffice, which is quite heavy to run on your server, but it does work. And there are libraries like Elaf to if you want to generate QR code or data matrix and things like that.
So now a few tips and tricks. First thing is, well, don't forget to send proper HTTP headers when you answer something which is not HTML, but PDF. Uh, you can int if you want the PDF to be displayed inside the browser or downloaded. Be careful, it's an int. Browsers can choose to disrespect your int, or depending on the browser, it may not be able to display it inside the browser. And you can provide a default file name that will be offered to the user when it will download. Uh, so, yes. So, one of the problems that you will usually encounter if you want to generate a big PDF file, we often we regularly generate PDF reports that are 500 pages or even more. It will take time, maybe 10 minutes, maybe even more to generate. If you just do it without taking any precaution. First, your users will be angry. They will click three times the button, and it will, of course, generate three times the machine load. And you will get a timeout from your various application stack, your Apache, your Asha proxy, your cache, your whatever. In the middle, will timeout. So you can, well, you can increase timeout and warn the user warnings. This will take some time, but users usually do not read warnings or do not care about warnings. So you can fork off your thread or whatever to not block your application, which usually has some kind of limited amount of threading or process or whatever. But that's not really handy. So the best solution when you are generating Bing files is to use a task scheduler, like Celery or whatever else. It's something where you when the user click on the button, you just add an entry in some kind of database to say, I must generate that. And then you have an external process with one or more workers that will fetch task to complete, complete the task externally out of the usual web processing. And then you send back the result typically by email. Uh, you s so you send the user an email. Your PDF file is now ready, and it's for big files. It's better to provide a link where to download rather than a mail attachment because big mail attachment may be rejected by SMTP server or may be slow to uh, to reach the destination because email is not was not really conceived to have several to have huge attachments. So better send the link and. If you just do that, if you send a link to download the result, it means you generated the result somewhere on your server. So you need to clean, because else you will have all your reports that will grow and grow and grow and grow. So typically, you say to the user, here is your link. It, is, it will work for two weeks. So download your thing in, two weeks, in the next two weeks. And then in a cron tab, you just run something that remove everything that is older than two weeks. Um, so another problem is that you have to be careful with search engines, because typically you have a website, a content management system, with a button to download the PDF version of each page. It's a normal uh, href link. A crawler, Google, or whatever comes, it makes a PDF version of every page of your site and your server is done. So <laughs> um, you can try using robots.txt, but it's very limited. Google has some extension to it, but if you want to stay standard, it's very limited. So a hack, the most common, is to have the button to generate the PDF to be a post and not a get. It's a bit hackish because it's getting data. It's not posting data, but it does defeat most of the robots that will never perform post requests. Or you can just use load balancer, but that's it. we're short in time. So uh, another thing is that in general it's expensive, so you have to estimate the volume before deploying production. Try to get an estimate how much 
you will have to do it. So that's scheduler and grid help. And you can use some tricks like that to set to sell to the operating system that the PDF take up process. You will be at running at low priority with a nice command and with the task set to C0, use only the first core. So you leave the, all the other cores of your server to process normal requests, and all the PDF will only run first core. Uh, so another problem that you can have is some time, that's mostly with, with the print, but with image or something can happen with other solution, is that your rendering may not have access to all the data because it may not be running with all the authorization of the user. So you will, you may have to like extract the user cookies and provide them to with a printer to whatever tools so it can perform the request to get the CSS or the image or the whatever with the credential of your user that asks for the PDF. Uh, so there is a bit of hack like that that you may have to do to get the, request, the cookies of the user, mangle them a bit, and give, give them to the your lib2 opener that will be used to fetch the resources from the print or whatever. Uh, and that's, uh, yes, that's the last, uh, if I remember well, that's the last uh, problem we can have. It's you have a form where the user fills in a lot of information and can add some PDF file and in the form, a file file. And then at the end, you generate a report with the answer of the user on the PD concatenated the PDF that he provided using with your PDF TK or LaTeX or whatever. Or even do an export of all the response of all your users with the PDF the user provided. Sometimes it works, sometimes it breaks. That's because some PDF can have digital restriction management in them and you cannot concatenate them. So you have to use a tool like PDF info from Poplar or whatever to check, validate that the PDF the user provide is not DRM encrypted. And if it's if not, you reject it or don't concatenate it. That's it. Thank you for coming and <laughs>